Well, this morning, it is good to be with you, whether you are online or uh, here in person, it is good to have you here at Calvary by the Sea. If you're visiting, please know that you are loved and welcome, that you are safe and that God is well pleased with you. Certainly this week has not been an easy week um, in many ways for me, but I come to you to just quickly give you some thoughts. This sermon I've titled, This Will Only Go Away With Prayer and Action. But let's begin with this. Today's scripture is first and foremost a prayer. Did you hear me? First and foremost, a prayer. A prayer to the divine about something that was happening in the community of Jesus. His disciples weren't getting along. Now, I, I'm sure you've never heard of Christians not getting along, right? That doesn't happen often, but the reality is that it was already happening during Jesus' time. But we get this privilege, this honor, to be able to listen in to the prayer of Jesus. But the prayer is not just for his disciples, but the prayer is for the future of his disciples. Well, who are the future disciples? You and I are the future disciples. But Jesus prays for us, prays for our communities, and prays for those who will be one day believers, those who will one day come to know him. But you understand that our communities are all so different, right? This morning, some communities are grieving. Some communities are weeping. Some communities are in crisis. Others are hurting. But Jesus prays for everyone because you have to understand something about prayer. Prayer is not static. Prayer is active. Prayer is active. It's moving. It's going somewhere. It moves. It acts. Prayer does such a thing to us. Let me ask you, have you ever had someone pray over you? If you haven't, may I suggest you do? Because when someone prays over you, when someone puts their hand over you and prays like this, there is something powerful that happens in prayer. We are moved to a place of change, of action. I remember when I was ordained, they, all the pastors came and put their hands over my head and they prayed for me. But they prayed for me so that I can go out into the world to do something. You see, when prayer happens, you are moved to do something. So when you hear about prayer, it should be accompanied by action. Because prayer restores, it moves, it, it takes us into the future, it moves us ahead. But too often we pray, but we don't act. I'll say that again. Too often we pray, but we don't act. And I guess what I'm saying to you this morning is that what we experience this week is madness. Let's call it what it is. It is something that is beyond our understanding. Can we ever fully understand what happened this week in Uvalde, Texas? You know, Dr. Martin Luther King says, we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. He said that more than 60 years ago, and yet systemic change in America has not happened to where it needs to happen. But some things can only change with prayer and with action. And perhaps this is why Jesus prayed at the end. I wonder what was Jesus thinking? His last action would be praying for someone. He prayed for his disciples, and you know the rest. Because here we are today, clearly the prayer of Jesus was not just words, but it was action. Because from the prayer for his disciples to love one another shifted the movement, right? Because they loved, then they were able to pass it on to others, and to others, and to others. You see the action, and to others, and it even has arrived to us here in Hawaii. So the action of prayer is a real thing. It doesn't just stay static, but it is active. Praying has action connected to it. 
But how many times have we heard people say, we pray today for those who we've lost in this city or that city, and we pray for that person or that other community that God would be with them? Absolutely, prayers are necessary. But when will we truly see an end to senseless acts of violence, to madness? Because clearly someone is acting, but not praying, and not praying, and praying, but not acting. But see, they go together. There's this wonderful pastor. His name is James Earl Massey. He's known as the beloved prince of preachers. And he says in a sermon outlining why people won't act against madness. He says, they won't act because they cannot recognize the madness. They won't act because of their cowardice. They won't act because it does not involve them. You see, we need courage to act in this day because the power of prayer should move us to action. Jesus prayed for his disciples to be in unity and they acted upon it. And here we are 2,000 years later because of their action. See, it's no wonder to me why my great-grandmother would be praying on her knees at four in the morning. It's no wonder why she would stretch out her hands over my head as a little boy. It's no wonder to me why my grandmother would pray for me and would call me and said, I'm praying for you. It's no wonder why I hear from my parents today, I'm praying for you. Because there is power in prayer and some things will only change through prayer. Do we want justice? Do we want to see peace? Do we want to see healing in our world? Then prayer is necessary. But those who pray for the world and for humanity must also act upon the world and humanity. The language of the scripture says, If my people will humble themselves and pray, Seek my face, here's the action, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. You see, I guess what I'm saying to you this morning is that we must move beyond just praying for our world. We need to start acting on behalf of our world. Because prayer and action goes together. Dr. Martin Luther King prayed, but he also acted. Cesar Chavez prayed and yet acted. Thich Nhat Hanh prayed and yet acted. See, our best selves is when we act, when we become peacemakers, when we stand up to injustice, because we do not overcome evil with evil, right? This is scripture here, but overcome evil with good. And I think the only prayer worth praying this morning is to act against madness. It shouldn't be so foreign to us. Jesus did this. He stood up against the madness of his day. And we know how Jesus ended his life on earth, on a cross, sacrificed. Jesus prayed, but Jesus also acted. So may we this morning be reminded of the Jesus who gave his life for us on a cross action because he believes so much in us. He believes so much in this world because our God is not against us. Our God is for us. Our God is a benevolent God who is with us, wants the best for us. And so when we step into this world, one way to respond this morning is not just to pray, but it's also to act. For this will only go away with prayer and action. May we step into that this morning, friends, as the people of God, as the church called to respond to the injustice of the world. Help us, Holy Spirit, this morning, 
to hear your voice, to be compelled, to be moved, to be reminded that just because it doesn't affect us, just because it hasn't hit Hawaii or our communities or our schools, that it's not important. That just because it's not our problem or it's not our issue, that we'll just ignore it. Give us courage to act. Remove our cowardice. Remove our inability to act. Word of God and word of life, we all say together, thanks 